So we chose to do our topic on failure to rescue. Because this is a major problem in healthcare. Um, some knowledge graphs about this topic. Um, current themes that you see are a lack of observations made for a prolonged period of time, which causes changes in vital signs often to go undetected. Um, also, a lack of recognition of the importance of patient deterioration and are not taking action. Um, delayed medical attention even when deterioration is recognized. And signs that a patient is deteriorating can occur up to eight hours before cardiac arrest or code blue is called. And up to 70% of these can be prevented by calling a rapid response team. And some other knowledge gaps. Um, some reasons why a failure to recognize deterioration include lack of communicating a sense of urgency, um, very knowledge, skills, or willingness to act, or general inexperience. And some healthcare workers are reluctant to escalate a patient's care after patient deterioration is recognized, and this can be due to missing or unclear protocols, um, inability to identify appropriate time to escalate or fear a negative response. The definition of failure to rescue is failure to recognize and save a hospitalized patient's life when he or she is experiencing complications that are not presented upon admission. So the possible related problems are a lack of education on when to call a code versus a rapid response team. So a rapid response team is a team of clinicians who bring clinical expertise right to the bedside. And it's very different from a code blue. For every 100 beds, rapid response team is called for 10. And identifying unstable patients and those patients likely to suffer from cardiac or arrest. Respiratory problems are what they're called for. Another possible related problem is ability to identify a critical change in patient status or a health change in vital signs. Um, without knowing what to look for besides obvious signs, it becomes harder to look, find when a patient is deteriorating. Our nurses are recognizing people in trouble more quickly and intervening sooner when there's a rapid response team and an EWS scoring, which we'll talk about later. And we, they have gone from about eight codes per month to about six, and the survival rate of these patients go from 40% to 60% when there's a rapid response team and the EWS scoring in place. So some statistics on it would be a cardiac arrest. So before it was 63% before it was implement or 63 patients, and then after it was about 22. Yeah. So there's a 65% increase in saves. Deaths from cardiac arrests were 37 before the rapid response team that EWS were implanted, and 16 after, so 56%. And no inpatient deaths were 302 before and after it went down to 20, 222, so it was a 25% change. Yeah! Some other possible problems are fear of being incorrect in calling a code when it's not actually necessary. Nurses can be afraid of calling code blue when it could just end up being machine error, so there could be some hesitancy. And a lack of communication between staff. A lot of times... Um, Assistant personnel like NACs take vital signs for the nurses and they might not report a drastic change in a vital sign or you might not notice a trending vital sign as a nurse. So the two most important players we found in this problem are nurses because they're supposed to be doing hourly rounding and they have the most patient contact and also we found the NACs to be the other player because the NACs are taking the vital signs and supposed to be watching the trends and relating back to the nurses if there is a deviation in their baseline of the patient. So some potential solutions could be having a rapid response team in place, using the EWS or other scoring method, and having a lower patient-nurse ratio. So a rapid response team is part of the 100,000 Lives campaign, and the definition of a rapid response team is a team of clinicians who bring critical care and expertise to the bedside, and they are an extra layer of early detection in high-risk patients. Some pros of rapid response team is they decrease the rate of cardiac arrests, mortality rates, and length of stay in the ICU. They improve response time to deteriorating patients, 
and it's a team-based approach to a clinically challenging, challenging situation. Some cons are it requires more staffing and it can be more money for the, having the extra staff on hand. Nurses can feel inadequate by being overpowered by this team and it requires more education for the staff of the team and that can be more work on the hospital. Um, some recommendations is having a rapid response team available in a hospital. The use of rapid response teams was one of the six life-saving strategies recommended by the IHI to improve patient outcomes. And in a study of 262 patients, using the rapid response team during a 16-month period in, redu resulted in a reduction by 56% in the monthly rate of code blues in medical surgical units. Yeah! So another potential solution that we found to work for failure to rescue was the use of EWS scoring or other types of scoring. So EWS scoring is called Early Warning Scoring System, and it helps nurses decide whether to call a rapid response team to the bedside, or if it's just a small increase in blood pressure or heart rate, or if they need to call a code blue. So this concept has been used in hospitals all over the United Kingdom, and the United Kingdom decided to start it when they realized that nurses did not have complete sets of criteria to identify when a patient was failing. So the United Kingdom wanted to create a clear criteria that would promote nurses to call the RTT. And that's what they called the MUSE, which is what they call was modified early warning systems. So if one of the following six vital signs fails, falls into the red zone, then the nurse is promoted to make assessments on the patient and determine the MUSE score. So I actually have it right behind me. So the different scoring is respiratory rate, heart rate, um, blood pressure, just the systolic, the level of consciousness, the temperature, and the hourly um, urinary output. And they score at 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So the major scorings would be less than 8 respiratory, less than 44 heart rate, BP less than 70 unresponsive, and then hourly would be less than 10 milliliters an hour. And then on the other side, it would be more than 30 for a respiratory rate and more than 129 for heart rate, more than 200 for BP, and then new agitation or a loss of consciousness, and more than 38.5 for temp Celsius, and then less than 45 milliliters an hour, and that would be zero, so that's where that would line up. So if a nurse does a score sheet and it equals more than four, they're supposed to call the rapid response team. So some pros and cons for the EWS scoring are, so a pro would be it's easy to follow, uh, it gives nurses a criteria on when to call the rapid response team, and one person named Kathy Duncan, she's an RN faculty expert on rapid response teams for IHI, said that EWS can add another layer of early detection to the rapid response team system, and we want to encourage recognition of high-risk patients as soon as possible and it saves lives because it detects them earlier, and it's no longer just a single parameter approach of just the nurse viewing the patient. Some cons would be not very time manageable in an emergency situation, and it's never been used before in the US, so people may seem skeptical about it or not be able to catch on to the importance of the EWS scoring system. Um, a recommendation for this would be calling the rapid response team when the nurse receives a score of four or more, and this has seen an increase in the numbers of calls and a decrease in the amount of cardiac arrests. So the effectiveness is it has cut the crash cart time in half. It's gone from eight crashes, it's going from eight crashes per 1,000 to four crashes per 1,000, and it's re improved the response of deteriorating patients. So another solution that we propose is having a smaller patient to nurse ratio, and this refers to how many patients one nurse is responsible for taking care of. So a potential con for this is that it might cost hospitals more money, but actually in the long term it might end up saving hospitals money because it's saving lives and preventing more expensive treatments. And one study showed that if all hospitals increased RN staffing to match the top 25 best, staff, best staffed hospitals, more than 6,700 hospital patient deaths and over 60,000 adverse outcomes could be avoided. And every additional
patient assigned to an RN is associated with a 17% increase in medical complications. So the smaller the patient to nurse ratio is, the better the likely outcomes are. Um, so my recommendations would be that a nurse should not be assigned more than four patients. And one study found that each additional patient above four that a nurse is required to care for is associated with a 7% increase in the likelihood that they will die within the 30 days. And then in addition to having a smaller nurse to patient ratio, I would also recommend greater nursing surveillance. So this refers to like around the clock rounding, so making sure that the nurse is going in there routinely and checking up on their patients. And one study showed that patients who receive surveillance an average of 12 times a day or more were half as likely to experience failure to rescue. So the conclusion we've drawn from this project is a way to increase lives instead of calling a code blue is early recognition through EWS scoring, calling the rapid response team when a patient receives a score of four or greater, and giving nurses a smaller patient ratio. That way they can increase their hourly rounding and have more time with each patient. Hello, how are you doing today? Um, I'm like having trouble breathing. How long have you really fast? How long have you felt this way? Um, it kind of just came on me. Yeah, yeah. Because we're just in here, so check your blood pressure. Okay. Okay, your blood pressure is pretty low. What's your normal blood pressure for you? Uh, what, what was it? It was 93. Oh, no, it's usually 100. So okay. Do you have any difficulty like, breathing? Yeah, and I feel like my heart's beating really fast. It's not mm -hmm. difficulty, it's just I can't feel like I can't slow it down. Check your pulse. Okay. Yeah, it is pretty fast. Okay. Great. Okay, I'm gonna get you some oxygen, okay. and then I'm gonna call a rapid response team. Okay. Do you think I'm breathing fast? Mm, I'll take your respirations in a minute. Still late at it. One thing at a time. Okay. Well, if you say so. Your blood pressure was a little low. It was 93 okay. over 74. I'm just feeling like hot and kind of sweaty. And your heart rate's 106, so that's pretty fast too. Oh, okay. But you're talking to me, so that's a good sign. I don't hear yeah. at all. Huh. Well, we'll look into it, but I think you're doing alright for now because you're talking to me. Oh, 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 oh.